Hello and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me, your host, Owen. Guys, this is the channel that brings you daily Rangers news, brings you your team every day, guys. If you want all the latest news about Glasgow Rangers, about the most successful team in football, about the greatest team in football, you need to hit that sub, ring that notification bell, set it to all so that the reminder springs upon your mobile device or your phone or your computer and therefore you'll get all our daily news videos our podcasts our live streams all the content about rangers well we're going to talk about a few different things today in our news roundup video we're going to talk about chris boyd and what he's been having to say about the out of contract players we're going to talk about how ross mccrory the aberdeen player will benefit rangers that seems strange after we've lost two nil to them we're going to talk about um a prospective signing as well um how a signing could well be coming on board very, very soon. Um, and also about the behaviour of Aberdeen fans towards Rangers fans on Sunday at Pitodri. So let's start with Rangers legend Chris Boyd. The man has got 101 goals in 143 appearances for the club. Well, I suppose it was 104 if you count the three he scored in his last 29 um, in his second spell at the club. Anyway, Chris Boyd has been having his say about the out-of-contract players. Now, obviously, um, you know, there's an awful lot um, of thinking for Michael Beale to be doing over the uh, summer as regards, obviously, those out-of-contract players, those eight, nine, if you include Malik Tillman, and obviously what they what we need to do. Now, I think Chris Boyd, obviously, when he, in his comments today, was talking largely about those players that obviously are owned by Glasgow Rangers rather than Malik Tillman. And this is what Chris Boyd had to say. He said, um, the decision will be already made. He said, there'll be definitely have, have been discussions, but the longer it goes on, on, it looks as if Alfredo Morelos and Kent will walk out the door for nothing, which is shocking. It should have been tied up a long time ago or a bit of business done considering the type of money flying around for them. I think this is a really you know, fascinating comment from Chris Boyd here. You know, the fact that he's obviously bemoaning the fact that, uh, well, I mean, let, let, let's just be honest here. It's, it's Ross Wilson, isn't it? Ross Wilson allowed the contracts to run down. Ross, Ross Wilson uh, has left us in this position where we're going to have possibly eight players move on for nothing in the summer. You know, I mean, realistically, you're looking at what? I mean, Alfredo Morelos was once the subject of a, you know, a £16 million bid from Lille. Ryan Kent was worth up to £7, £8 million. You know, you could have been bringing in somewhere between £20 and £23 million into the club for those two players. But, you know, due to the fact that Ross Wilson has allowed their contracts to run down and has done nothing about it because he said that... Um, allowing a player's contract to run down keeps them on their toes which i think you know obviously is not true it serves the player better obviously than it serves the club especially in this day of bosmans and the fact that they can walk for free and then obviously all the money goes to them and rather than the club that loses them i think obviously this is an excellent point by chris boyd the fact that it is ultimately shocking that we are getting no money for these two players. I mean, I know the fact that obviously Alfie has repaid that a million pound transfer fee, but the fact that, you know, we could have had up to 16 million for him in the past is pretty shocking, really. The fact that we're losing out on all this money, all that time invested in these two players on the fact that, you know, that, that we've done so much, I think, for the country, you know, as much. OK, look, let's get it right. Alfie's done loads for Rangers, so has Ryan Kent in the past. But the fact that, you know, that we've obviously given them the opportunities, to, you know, to play to impress in Europe and obviously you know has, has benefited their career to play for Glasgow Rangers is a huge benefit and you know it, it's obviously advanced their careers and now they're going to walk for nothing you know I think obviously Chris Boyd is right with that comment he says other than that you're looking at Alan McGregor Stephen Davis Philip Hallander Ryan Jack Scott Arfield you can't keep them all but you can't get rid of everyone who understands the football club the DNA of it all you can't have too many of them in your dressing room now I think Chris Boyd makes an excellent point here. You know, you're going to have up to say five, maybe even more new names arrive during the summer. You know, you're losing there a lot of what I would call Rangers man, a lot of Rangers men, aren't you? You're losing a lot of people with a lot of experience in this club. Davis, McGregor, Jack, Arfield, for example, all players who have served a long time with the club, who understand the club, who have Rangers in the, running through their bloodstream. And look, I can see the point of view that, you know, they're serial losers. Some people call them, you know, that we haven't had the success. Two trophies in 12 years is just not good enough for this club. I get that. 100% get that. But he's right. You know, we, we can't keep all of them, but we can't get rid of them all. You know, there just is not the money there to go and, and, and splurge on, you know, 10, 11, 12 new players. And you do, like I said, need players at the club, you know, to, 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 to sort of... in 
in, indoctrinate those people that are coming into the club in the ways of Rangers. Now, Chris Boyd has said in his interview that he thinks the only player that he, that he would keep is Ryan Jack. He thinks that Ryan Jack should be given a new deal, obviously, given the fact that obviously he's one of our most influential central defensive midfield players and of the fact that obviously as well, he is a Rangers man and will help to obviously spread the word of Rangers to all those new signings. Obviously, interesting news indeed, because, you know, the fact that a lot of fans obviously think, you know, given the fact that Ryan is now out for a month, you know, he's out again injured, you know, again has missed more time that, you know, maybe these injuries are the reason why he shouldn't be kept. So, you know, it's interesting, obviously, that Chris Boyd thinks that he should be kept. I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think about Ryan Jack? He certainly seems to be someone who divides opinion. Certainly on the podcast the other day, we had a lot of people in the live chat saying, keep him. Um, some people saying, put him in a pay as you play. Others saying, don't keep him. You know, it's a very, very much a topic that splits Rangers fans over what to do with Ryan Jack. But interesting that Boyd thinks out of those eight players, not including Tillman, the only one that you should be keeping is Ryan Jack. Next, let's talk about Ross McCrory. Obviously, Ross McCrory was a player who, an ex-Rangers player who now plays for Aberdeen. Now, rumour has it that Ross McCrory is on the verge of joining English Championship side Bristol City for two million pounds. Now, if this move goes through, which it looks like it will do, Rangers will benefit from this move due to a sell-on clause that was put into McCrory's contract. I guess you can praise Ross Wilson for that. This will lead to Rangers netting a uh, fee of 200,000 pounds from the sale of Ross McCrory. Good news indeed, extra money into the club. Again, money we can put towards, hopefully put towards our transfer budget in the summer. But, you know, the fact that obviously we, McCrory is someone we brought through. McCrory is an ex-Rangers player. He's someone who learned his trade at Rangers. He's gone on to play against Aberdeen. Unfortunately, obviously, he was in that team that beat us at the weekend. But you know, the fact that he's obviously going to be on the move now to Bristol City for, it's suggested, £2 million, um, obviously would therefore pay Rangers £200,000, which obviously is a good bit of business um, to be able to get that bit of extra money for a player, obviously, that we're not even selling or is not part of our club anymore. So good news there for Rangers indeed on that front. OK, let's talk about Jack Butland next. Jack Butland, who is... Um, reserve goalkeeper, well, he is he was he's under contract at Crystal Palace at this moment in time, although he's on loan at Manchester United. He was part of their match day squad that got to the FA Cup final the other day. Um also part of their match day squad that went out of the Europa League. Um yet to play any minutes for Manchester United. Um however, United do see him as a credible backup. Now he is out of contract with Crystal Palace in the summer. Now, according to several reports in the media today, including in the Daily Record, it is rumoured that Jack Butland is exceptionally close and is on the brink of a Rangers transfer. The paper said that Rangers are reportedly on the brink of signing Manchester United loan keeper, loan keeper Jack Butland from Crystal Palace. Um, this is Michael Beale, who is on the lookout for a new number one, given the fact that McGregor is out of contract and is likely to retire. Uh, Rangers were linked with Butland a year ago, but nothing came about. Now, according to the Scottish Sun and the Daily Record, he is on the brink of agreeing a deal that would see him handed the number one shirt at Ibrox. Butland is someone who has played nine times for his country and, like I said, has gained experience playing at Manchester United. Certainly, I think this would be a positive move for the club to bring in a goalkeeper of the calibre of Jack Butland. Butland is 30 years old, which obviously is no age for a goalkeeper, um, you know, given the fact McGregor is 41, for example. Um, Butland is someone who commands his area, who comes for crosses, which is certainly something that you know, McGregor hasn't done this year. He is a, you know, a big presence at the back. He's 6'5". He's a big old unit. He's a good shot stopper, penalty saver. He commands his area. He commands his defence. He is a quality goalkeeper. He has nine caps for England at senior level and during his time in the premiership with Stoke City for example he was absolutely outstanding a guy who began his career at Birmingham has also had loan spells at Leeds United so has been at several different um, high profile English clubs obviously now including Manchester United I think that bringing in Butland would be a fantastic move for this club and having Butland as our number one next season would be good business for Rangers especially as the fact that he's on a free it would not cost us anything obviously only wages that obviously 
obviously, you know, leaves a great deal of that, of that transfer budget free to go and sign additional players over and beyond Butland. But definitely a good deal for Rangers if we can sign Jack Butland, which it appears we are on the brink of doing. OK, last story to talk about today. Um, now, apparently Police Scotland have been informed of some bad behaviour by Aberdeen fans at the weekend. Now, I know what Celtic fans and other fans are going to say, oh, sour grapes, typical Rangers whining and crying because they got beat. Unfortunately, not. Um, that's not the reason why. The reason is why Aberdeen fans have generally not behaved well towards the their, their Rangers counterparts. There's been um, two main incidents, one of them extremely serious, which could have led to death or, you know, some sort of permanent injury being sustained um, to a Rangers fan. Now, during the game, apparently um, Aberdeen fans were heard chanting and singing chants that mocked the Ibrox disaster and also dead club legends, which is very sick indeed. This has been reported to Aberdeen and also to Police Scotland. Furthermore, Rangers supporters coaches were allegedly attacked by Aberdeen fans after the game, including windows being smashed with objects thrown through them. One Rangers fan, one young Rangers fan was actually injured. Apparently, an Aberdeen fan who is a teenager has now been arrested on a suspicion of assault over that um, offence. Um, like I said, Police Scotland are investigating at this time. So... You know, this is disgusting and disgraceful behaviour, not only on the account of the fact that uh, obviously the chance of mocking the Ibrox disaster, which is just absolutely disgusting, um, you know, behaviour from Aberdeen. And I hope that, you know, that if Aberdeen can identify the people responsible for this, they will take action against these cretins. Um, moreover, you know, the fact that the, the supporters buses have been attacked, you know, no supporter should be ever put a threat or any sort of danger just because they've gone to a football game and support a different team to the home team or to the away team it is disgusting behavior um you know i genuinely am shocked and appalled at this behavior you know the same way that if it was rangers fans doing it i would condemn them you know this is not the way to behave in the in the 21st century towards towards people you know you do not attack coaches you do not assault people and you certainly do not sing songs mocking dead people that is quite frankly a shameful action um on behalf of aberdeen so obviously that has been referred to not only the S the sfa but also police scotland to look into well obviously we're building towards the semi-final on sunday obviously which will be a major test for rangers after what we well what we can say was a quite appalling performance on sunday against aberdeen certainly that team that uh, turned out in the first half Played quite well. Second half was shocking. And obviously, you know, really appalling defensively. And obviously going forward, taking chances, you know, a performance we're going to have to majorly up if we're going to threaten our neighbours from across the city. You know, we created chances, but just did not take them. And that is just not good enough. And at the end of the day, the defence again was absolutely appalling. Interesting statistic I heard earlier. I was listening to Heart and Hand and this is a statistic about our time, obviously, without being us being without Connor Goldson, who is not only um, a good central defender, but is also the leader and communicator at the back. Now, apparently, in the 10 games that Goldson has not played this season, we have conceded 15 goals, which obviously is nowhere near good enough, which is more than a goal a game. In the games that Goldson has played, whilst it's not amazing, it does show how much he, of a difference he makes. We've conceded 19 goals in 23 games, less than a goal a game. 12 out of Rangers, 13 clean sheets have also come when Goldson has been in the team so it's, I think it's absolutely vital that we have Connor back for this semi-final which obviously I think is the game of the season now for us given the fact the league has gone and this is all we have left to play for now is the Scottish Cup this is definitely the game of the season and a must-win game for Rangers on Sunday well guys we'll obviously continue to build up to that on here on Glasgow Rangers Nation also look out for a video dropping later talking about this, the fact this squad needs a rebuild not a revamp which is obviously something that uh, the book that my um, Michael Beale has talked about. Thank you so much for choosing to watch Glasgow Rangers Nation. Thank you so much for choosing to watch this news video, guys. Remember to hit the sub, ring the notification bell to get all the latest news and to get your team every day and get all the information about Glasgow Rangers Nation. Well, I'll be back to speak to you again really soon here on this channel, here on Glasgow Rangers Nation. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.